Well, hello everybody, Mike with Spray Jones coming to you with another video educating you on the use of spray foam insulation. If you're new to this channel, I am Mike, the owner of Spray Jones, and I produce content on the web for people to learn about closed cell, open cell, polyurethane spray foam insulation. The videos that you're watching are my guys doing the work. We are located in Canada and Western Canada, and we deal with some cold temperatures and some hot summers, and we have a fairly good working knowledge as a tradesman of what works. We've been spraying foam for 19 years. I've been in the spray foam industry for 24 years, and we have a very good understanding of who, what, when, where, and why. And today we're gonna to talk about how thick uh, can you spray foam? How thick should it be? And where are the limitations? Because a lot of people have questions about things that they've heard, Facebook chats, um, WhatsApp chats, people have said, commented on other videos, that the foam can only be so thick. So let's take a look at it. What can it be and why? There's two different products out there and they behave completely different because the chemistry is different. Open cell foam is a water blown foam and it does not have the same limitations on application thickness the way the closed cell foam does. Now, the reason that that is, is because the water is converted into steam and that's our blowing agent. And during that phase change, when it goes from a liquid to a gas, it cools down the foam. It actually pulls the heat from the chemical reaction out of the cells and it stabilizes the foam mixture. Therefore, uh, two and three and four and five inches and eight inches of open cell foam are entirely possible to be sprayed at one time without the foam cracking and splitting and causing such high temperatures that it could melt plastics. Okay, now practical terms, you're probably not going to want to spray eight inches all at once if gravity is against you. So in a wall or even in a ceiling, you're going to want to provide it in lifts that enable you to have the foam stay in place with where you want it to be and not be sagging down, pulling down because you can build too much mass too quickly and it'll either drip or pull away. So you want to try and limit your coverage that way. But if you're spraying down onto a floor or into an area uh, from above or into a cantilevered overhang or something like that where you've got to fill up a spot, that's the reason that we use open cell foam is that you can build it up very quickly into uh, blind cavities or semi-blind cavities without reprisals of the foam causing issues um, with the actual installation. Whereas closed cell foam is very different. It's using a uh, type of hydrocarbon blowing agent, an HFO blowing agent, and that product has to be chemically terminated. There has to be an actual catalyst and there has to be a way of terminating the reaction. So the way that that happens is that the foam is sprayed in lifts and that there's a certain amount of heat that is built up to convert the hydrocarbon blowing agent from a liquid to a gas. Again, that's a phase change. So when it gets to a certain temperature, it converts from liquid in the cells to gas and that's what's puffing up and blowing your foam and under the normal chemistry conditions it's designed to be two inches per lift and that means you can put a two inch pass on and there's going to be the proper amount of catalyst to blowing agent to terminate it and the foam is going to rise to its proper thickness and then it's going to set and uh, be chemically inert at that point. Now, if you go too thick, too quick, which means all at one time, if you started to try and say go double, maybe you wanted to put four inches on instead of two, then yes, you're gonna be running into a problem. And the reason is in the chemistry, you've exceeded the recipe, if you will. It's not that you're modifying it in the barrel, it's that you've sprayed and built up so much heat so quickly that the catalyst cannot be terminated fully uh, in the reaction one-to-one -one, and as a result there's too much catalyst being uh, converted in the system and the foam can have a risk of potentially smelling or cracking. You've stretched the cells. Uh, the cells are supposed to be round and oblong. When you stretch it too thick too quick 
they become oblong and then they are uh, dimensionally unstable so that when you have thermal shocks of hot versus cold the foam is going to be weak and the foam can crack the feel the foam can delaminate it can peel away so when we are dealing with regular chemistry closed cell foam two pound foam we want to have a two inch application then we want to let it cool usually that's anywhere from 10 minutes to 15 minutes depending on suppliers uh, and then from there you can put another one on now there have been new advances in the closed cell foam market where uh, BSF has it uh, they have a high build they call it XL foam in Canada and Huntsman has their high build foam where we can safely spray and it's designed to spray uh, up to five inches at one time and it's chemically designed to do this and this is an advantage for doing ceilings where we've got to reach a five inch spec or six inch spec a lot of times what we'll do is we'll come in and put uh, four inch or five inch on all at one time the way that they've designed it and then from there we'll go around with the regular product and touch up and put the second a second pass on to bring it up to the fifth or the sixth inch and detail out our corners and our edges and all that sort of stuff where we're not trying to get huge copious amounts of foam into tight tight little spots so there are products out there that can do it uh, Huntsman and BSF and I think most of the major suppliers now have got reduced uh, intervals too uh, where you can put two inches on and then there's no wait time you know you can go put two inch on and then as soon as it's set up uh, meaning it's like dry to the touch then you can put another two inches on so you can go up to four inches in two lifts if you will without any Thing going wrong and then you would give it uh, an interval before you would put another two inches on as far as foam being sprayed and how thick can you go in total uh, there's recommendations on spraying up to eight inches in a 24-hour period and the suppliers all have sort of recommended guide of you can go two and then two and then you give it like an hour and then you go two and two again so they've they've got a chart laid out that the installers follow for how thick that they can go and put the foam on to give it the proper amount of rest time and that's fairly easy to do I mean it's it's not hard it's no different than pouring concrete and mixing up thin set for tile jobs or how much paint are you going to try to roll out in a day I mean there's lots of practical applications where you might want to work at a certain pace installing whatever product you're installing so the spray foam is no different um, it's not that two inches is it and the second that you're two and a quarter inch you're a problem it's that you really need to be well beyond the three, three and a half inch. You, you basically have to start getting into nearly double. You know, you should have been putting two inches on. You put four inches on all at one time. That's where you're going to start to run into problems. So it's not that this is such razor thin. It's that the safety factors for the foam are, are fairly generous. But there are people that always want to test and go way beyond. There are no rules to them. There are no recommendations to them. They're just going to put it on as thick as they want. Uh, the biggest areas where you run into issues with too thick too quick is tight corners right joy stands connections uh, blind corners of some type where the building is and you've got to get foam back in like on a metal building and maybe there's a, a vertical column in your way and you're going to get out a little bit on this side and a little bit on that side and maybe that thing goes back eight nine ten inches well you very well quickly can be putting on a huge amount of foam into a very tight spot um, and cause problems now I have never seen uh, closed cell foam be a problem like if you've got a, a two inch wide two by six like there's only maybe like a two inch wide gap and you've seen the guys stick their gun into that thing and then go up the wall and all of a sudden the foam is squishing out of there in no time because it's very very shallow I've never seen that be a problem it's when there's quite a bit of width and a quite a bit of depth that a very large wide plug of foam is being built and I've seen it where our guys have had it happen. We're not infallible, where we've come into a joy stand, get into the back corner of a building, and they're trying to build it up, and they've, they've sprayed it and stopped thinking that they were okay, and then come back a little while later, and the foam had, had cracked when it was trying to cool down because they just built too thick. So it's really in the head of the installer that they have got to stop at a reasonable amount of time and let it cool, come back, build it up in lifts. Um, and these these things are fairly easy to do correct there's way more jobs done correctly out there far far more jobs done correctly than incorrectly but every once in a while people exceed the limitations um, I'm far more worried about moisture uh, when I'm putting foam on uh, wet walls wet wood 
wet seams, moisture being inside of a seam and you, and you can't see it and can't know it, and that compromising some sort of adhesion or something like that, then I am with the guys putting the foam on too thick too quick. But the tools are out there, you can do it. Open cell foam, we use that exclusively in very tight um, blind corners where we know we're gonna have to pump in a huge amount of material, so then that's what we do. Uh, and a lot of times if we've got a joist in that keeps going back and back and back and back, uh, we've got no choice, we'll, we'll pump that full of uh, open cell foam. In fact, we had a, a cantilever on a building, there was just no way to reach into it. It was beyond two feet, there was piping and ducting, so we used the jet stream to pump the foam in all the way to the back, filled that thing with a plug of foam all the way until it came inside the building. The thing was packed full of open cell foam, and then we, once we had achieved all of that, we switched out into uh, closed cell foam and then capped over the, the two pound, uh, the half pound with two pound. So it's a very good way to go. So there you go. Uh, two inch application is normal. There are high build products. If you're getting somebody or you're doing the work, just make sure you work in your intervals and go go slow go at a proper pace and then you won't have any problems all right lay out a comment lay out a question like and subscribe and we'll catch you on another video soon